Ephesians chapter 3 verse 1 for this reason I Paul a prisoner of Christ Jesus on behalf of you Gentiles assuming that you have heard of the stewardship of God's grace that was given to me for you somebody grab your neighbor and say I got something for you how the mystery was made known to me by revelation as I have written briefly when you read this you can perceive my insight into the mystery of Christ which was made not made known to the sons of men in other generations as it has now been revealed to his holy apostles and prophets by the spirit and this is the mystery that the Gentiles are fellow heirs members of the same body and partakers of the promise in Christ Jesus through the gospel of this gospel I was made a minister according to the gift of God's grace which was given to me by the working of his power to me though I am the very least of all the saints this grace was given to preach to the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ <laughs> can't get to the end of it can't exhaust it the unsearchable riches of Christ and to bring to light for everyone what is the plan of the mystery hidden for ages in God who created all things so that through the church the manifold wisdom of God might now be made known to the rulers and authorities in the heavenly places this was according to the eternal purpose that he has realized in Christ Jesus. In whom? Come on, two more verses. I know y'all y'all said, dang, I ain't read this much Bible in a while. <laughs> Verse 12. In whom we have boldness and access with confidence through our faith in him. So I ask you not to lose heart over what I am suffering for you, which is your glory. I want you to look at your neighbor. And I want you to look them square in the eyes and say, I got some family secrets. <laughs> I got some family secrets. You may be seated. Got some family secrets. I know y'all wondering how I got there over what we just read, but it's going to get good in a minute. One of the things you have to learn to do when you are studying the word of God and you are surveying the terrain of scripture is you've got to realize that everything in the word of God communicates. Everything communicates. Every, every word, every object, every item, it communicates a message for God. And because God is creator, what he has done is every time God creates something, he doesn't just create and just leave it to itself. He creates and then he encodes it with a message. You're, everything is walking the earth with a message from God. Everything that's breathing is walking the earth with a message from God. That's why the Bible says, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Because there's something in you that God has encoded to communicate communicate a message for him and not only is every living thing encoded with the message but every inanimate object is created and encoded with the message you say how do you know that I, I know that because the reason why God is able to use parables to teach spiritual principles because he knows the message he put in everything uh -huh. so, so the reason why God said I want you to look at the ant because he knew that when I created the ant I put inside of the ant a message for me and so when Jesus said if you don't praise me the rocks will cry out he, he understood that because he understood that when I created the rocks even the rocks carry a message from me everything is communicating the stars are communicating a message about God the clouds are communicating a message about God and, it, and here, here, here's, the, here's the, 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 the secret here even your storms are communicating a message about God because when Jesus told his disciples that 
They were going to the other side and he got in the boat and the storm showed up. Jesus didn't act surprised. He didn't act uh, perturbed. He didn't get full of anxiety. He did not get full of fear because he knew that if a storm shows up, it didn't show up to destroy me. It showed up to communicate something to me on the behalf of God. So when I am walking through scripture and when you're studying scripture and you're surveying you, you've got to be careful that you don't read too fast and you got to look at every word because everything is communicating for God. And so the scripture that we started with today, Paul starts out and he says, I, Paul, uh, an apostle, I, Paul. Now, the interesting thing about that verse is we're in the middle of a book. We're in the middle of an epistle. They, they, they didn't forget that Paul was the one writing to them. He starts his epistle by telling them that it is Paul. They know it's Paul. So the reason why Paul identified himself was not because he needed to inform the audience of who he was. Oh, y'all missed it. But Paul needed to uh, announce his name again because Paul understood you don't need to know who I am. You need to remember what I carry. Mm. You need to remember what I carry. You need to you need to remember. Sometimes you have to even remind yourself of what you're carrying, because a lot of times when you're when you're walking through life like the Apostle Paul, who had been whipped and who had been beat and who had been without food and who had been tossed over a cliff to die and then got back up and went back into the city to preach the gospel. He had been through hell and Paul had to remind them. But I am Paul. I, I am Paul. I am. I am Paul. I am Paul. And when you are waking up every day and you're just trying to live through the day and you're trying to survive through the day, sometimes you have to remind yourself, I am a Christian. I, I am saved. I, I am. I do belong to God. I, I know what's going on around me, but I am saved. And I, and I know we want houses and cars and jewelry and land, but sometimes to get you through the day, what you need to remember is that I'm saved. I'm, 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 I'm saved. If I don't have anything else, I know that the blood washed me. If I don't have anything else, I know that I've been redeemed. If I don't have anything else, I know I've been justified. I, I I am saved. And so Paul opens up his, his, his message and it's actually a parenthesis in the middle of his message where he stops and pauses and says, I'm, I'm Paul. I, I want to remind you that I'm Paul, that I'm Paul. I'm the one that was raised in Judaism. Now that's interesting that, that, that Paul is, is announcing himself because this letter is written to a bunch of Gentiles. I'm going to come back to that later. The letter is written to a bunch of Gentiles, a bunch of people who didn't grow up in Judaism, who didn't grow up in the synagogue, who didn't grow up in the temple. They weren't even allowed to be in there. But Paul reminds them that I am the one that grew up in Judaism and I had an encounter with God. But the interesting thing is I had an encounter with God after I thought I was following him. Mm. I had an encounter with God. I met God on the road and on the journey of my life. But I went on a journey into sin. I went on a journey into hell. I went on a, 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 a journey in rebellion to God. Sometimes, uh, sometimes God encounters us and he introduces himself to us after we thought we've already been following him. Uh, after I, I, I've been doing this all my life. I've been in this position all my life. I've been serving here all my life. I've been doing this and, and I finally gave God a yes and now that I've given God a yes it seems like God wants something else out of me uh -huh. I'm gonna find my people in a minute it seems like God it seems like God is never satisfied with, with the offering I bring him it's like I war with him for years to submit my life and then when I finally submitted it then he had another list of things he wanted to give me to do and and God I just got comfortable here I, I just said yes to this I, I just laid down that I, I just just walk through here but I'm on a journey I'm on a I'm on a journey I'm on a I'm on a journey through we're headed to Damascus and I'm headed to Damascus because I'm trying to follow God I'm trying to obey God I'm trying to do what he's telling me to do and so Paul is on this journey and on this route and, and, and he encounters God and he gets knots off of his horse but this is the interesting thing is that when Paul has this encounter the Bible says that the people around him heard a voice, but they did, couldn't understand what the voice said. Hmm. Paul had an encounter with God, and he knew he had had an encounter with God, 
And people knew he had an encounter with God, but the people couldn't understand what the encounter was about. Uh, I'm, I'm searching for my people and I'm going to get in my text. There, 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 there are people in the room that you, you've had an encounter with God and God's been dealing with you and, and he's been visiting you in your dreams and he's been disturbing you in your normal life and you're interrupting your schedule and there are people around you that know God is dealing with you but what you're having trouble with is nobody can seem to identify what the heck is going on. Nobody can tell you what God really he is about to do next. I, 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 I know I, we love, I love prophecy. I love it. I prophesy. But, 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 but sometimes I need more than a prophecy that say you about to step into a new season. I need, I need more than a prophecy that say I'm about to turn it around for you. I want to know what God is doing. What, 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 what is he really doing? What is this season called? What is, what is this door called? What is, what is this anointing on my life? What, what is this? And, and everybody can tell me we, we know God is dealing with you, but we don't know what it is. We don't, we don't know what to call you. And in one season, we called you an apostle. And another season, now we think you're a prophet. And another season, now we just think you're a deacon. And now, oh, you may be a psalmist. Oh, oh you actually may be a lawyer. You may not even be called to the church. And, and so now I'm just turned around and I'm confused because I know I'm anointed. I just don't know what for. I just, I just don't know what for. I don't know what it, I don't know what this anointing is for. I know I'm powerful, but I don't know what I'm supposed to do with it. I, I know I got favor, but I don't know what I'm supposed to do with it. I, I know people like me, but I don't know what I'm supposed to do with it. I'm, I'm Paul, and I heard a voice, but nobody can explain it. <laughs> nobody can explain what's happening to me. Nobody can explain this because my appetites are changing and, 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 and my desires are changing and people I used to want to be close to and friends with, uh, we just don't click no more and uh, uh, something's changing in me and I, and I thought I was going to be in this city all my life and now I feel like mm, something's changing and I, I thought I was going to be in this job all my life and it's mm, something's changing. What's, what's happening to me? me Paul this is the man that is addressing this group of people he said I want to remind y'all I'm Paul <laughs> I, don't worry, I want to remind y'all because because he's talking to a group of people in Ephesus that that they've encountered God in there and their encounter with God y'all sit down y'all making me nervous their, 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 their encounter with God their encounter with God was in the middle of a city that had idol worship and it was everybody was doing it <laughs> everybody was looking like that and everybody was going here and everybody was signing up for this and everybody was going to this college and everybody's getting this and and I don't know who you are but there's somebody that's looking at people around you and everybody's getting engaged and everybody's getting married and everybody's buying houses and everybody's getting promotions and all you can keep getting is a prophecy everybody is getting blessed and all you keep getting is a is a throw cloth thrown over you everybody is getting insight into destiny and all you're getting is a little money blessing every now and then but nothing about your life is really making sense it's not coming together it's not I don't I don't I don't know I mean I went back to school I got that degree and now I'm still lost and I and then I, I bowed the knee and then I said God okay I'm gonna join the praise team and now I'm still lost and then I, I said okay God I'm gonna get on the prayer ministry and I did that and now I'm still lost so what is this that you're doing in me and so Paul had this encounter and then he's blinded he's blinded He's blinded and then led to somebody's house that he doesn't know. Now, let me prophesy to you that you are getting ready to encounter people you never thought you were going to encounter. That a lot of you have been missing your blessing because you're looking in the wrong direction. 
I'm a, y'all getting quiet on me. I said, a lot of you have missed your blessing because you're looking in the wrong direction. Where this is coming from, you don't know them. They don't know your name. They don't know your story. They don't know your struggles. They don't know how you failed. And so you've got to just give that up. Stop beating yourself over the head. Stop going and mourning over what you did wrong and what you missed and how you wish you could have, should have, all Let it go because where you're going, nobody knows you. <laughs> they don't know you. They don't, they don't know you. They don't, they don't know you. They don't know you. And so Paul goes to Ananias' house, and Ananias lays hands on him, and he gets his sight, and then Paul starts trying to pursue God, and people are scared. You know, people are fearful. Like, this is the same God that tried to kill us. This is the same God that was, he, he was on a mission and trying to kill us. Watch this. And not trying to kill us for his own sake. He was trying to kill us because he's following God. And so now he got this new message from God, and we're supposed to believe him yeah. I, oh man y'all keep missing this I, I, Paul, Paul, Paul is like you to say you know yeah, yeah I, God told me to do this God told me to be there and I'm gonna I'm gonna just go there and I'm gonna do that I'm gonna serve there I'm gonna be there and then has 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 it happened to anybody that God ever flipped the script on you <laughs> God, you know yeah I, uh, yeah, God did. I, I did feel like I was doing this for God and I was following him. And now all of a sudden, the one thing I said I would never do, all of a sudden now I'm looking at it dead in the face. The, the people I said I could never be around a person like that. All of a sudden I feel drawn to those type of people, places I thought you would never find me there. All of a sudden I find myself drawn to places like that. That is Paul. So this man is the one that is addressing this group people and he's addressing a group of Gentiles a group of Gentiles Gentiles were were just a, a, a name for everybody that wasn't from Israel so this would have been in the Old Testament Israel were the people of God they were the apple of God's eye they were the people that got called out they were the people that got separated. Now, the interesting thing about the nation of Israel that Israel often forgot and that as time passed, we often forget is that even though they're Jews now, they all started as Gentiles. <laughs> because the founder of their faith is a man named Abraham who was, who, who, who was a man that lived in Babylon who was a man that moved in magic who was a man that was a prophet but a prophet for another God that, 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 that is the God that is the guy that started their whole faith is that God went into a club and found Abraham serving other gods and said, hey, I'm going a, I'm to a, I'm a, I'm a separate you. I'm going to pull you out. He, he went and found you in your own mess, doing your own thing, following your own methods and said, I'm going to call you out. It's, it's the whole meaning and definition of, of being the church, the ecclesia. It's being called out, the called out ones, the called out ones. So, But, but when God called them out, God then said, I, I'm going to teach y'all how to be my people. I'm going to teach you how to look like me. I'm going to teach you how to talk like me. I'm going to teach you how to approach me. I'm going to teach you how to worship me. I'm going to teach you what I call holy and what I call pure. And I'm going to teach you what I think relationships should look like. And I'm going to teach you what I think investments should look like. And I'm going to teach you how to treat your neighbor. And I'm going to even teach you how to treat strangers. I'm going to give you my laws and my mind and my customs and my civilization. I'm going to give it to you in, 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 in a way that you can live it out. But I want you to realize that those that are not my people... They can't have access to this. They can't have access to my promises. They can't have access to the privileges that you have. They don't have access to the blessings that you have. And so the, the interesting thing is that these people are blessed, but, but over here, these people are not blessed. And the only reason then that the Gentiles no longer could be blessed was because of how they were born and who they were born to. So then Judaism became about your ethnicity. Then it became about where you were born, what side of the tracks you were born on. Who's your mama? Who's your daddy? That determines if you can be a, a part of the group of the people of God. But if you didn't have the right parents and if you didn't have the right family and if you didn't have the right setup and if you weren't born in the right place, then you missed out on the promises of God. But Paul said... 
there's a mystery here. There's a, there's a mystery. What God is doing now is that he's tearing down the wall between these people that have always been called the people of God to now these people that weren't called the people of God. They're now being grafted in. But Paul uses an interesting word here that, again, we read too fast over. And the word is mystery mystery. Paul said this, this gospel is wrapped up in a mystery. How God's going to do this is a mystery. And I know we think a mystery is uh, 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 something like a, a, a thriller movie and a suspense and this what's going to happen and who done it and, and all that. But, but the word mystery here, it, it wasn't about just something that just can never be known. That's not what the word meant in the Greek. In the Greek, the word mystery had to do with an initiation. It was, it was how people were in initiated into religious rites it was if you wanted to be a part of a religious organization whether that wasn't Christianity what they would do is you would be initiated into it and when you got initiated then you had access to all of the privileges that came with that religion with that cult with that group and so what Paul said is that this gospel is a mystery it's an initiation well and so what's happening is you didn't just get born again to go to church on Sunday you got born again so that you could be initiated into a mystery to a mystery you got initiated into it you got you got called into it you got grafted into it and so when you are initiated Paul said now this mystery the, the difference between this and the other cults and religions of the world is that we're not trying to exclude anybody everybody is welcome anybody can get it anybody can walk through this but you're gonna have to come through this door you gotta come through Jesus and so Paul says uh, th this mystery is, is something that I've been given the grace of God to communicate and, 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 and what baffled me I wrestled with this all, all week is that I, I, couldn't, I couldn't wrap my mind on the significance of verse 6 I couldn't, I couldn't wrap my mind around it it said that this mystery is that the Gentiles are fellow heirs members of the same body and partakers of the promise in Christ Jesus through the gospel that, that sound real good sound real churchy sound real religious but I just couldn't wrap my mind about what it is that you're trying to communicate and how is this a mystery? How is this a secret? How do I have to be initiated into this secret? And, 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 and I looked at it and I found that, that, that Paul is saying that they're heirs and they're co-heirs and then there's a scripture over in the Hebrews that talks about Jesus is the heir of the world and then there's a scripture over in the book of Romans that talks about that God promised Abraham that he would be heir of the world but my issue with that I know y'all love church and y'all can shout over church stuff I get it but the issue with that for me is that don't do nothing for me That didn't, that didn't do nothing. I, I, I talk about all the time. There's a, there's a scripture in the Bible that people, Christians, have shouted over for years that I just couldn't get with because I didn't understand it. In the, in the scripture that says, let not your heart be troubled and be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. And we go to shouting and dancing. And I thought, mm, I don't get that because why do I have to be happy because you overcame the world? You, you told me to be of good cheer because you did something. That's like me saying, I want you to, I want you to get up and shout and dance because my bills are paid. I didn't get it. I, it just didn't make sense. I know we shout and we run and we dance about it, but it didn't make sense to me. This was another instance of that, that, okay, this mystery, I'm supposed to shout and dance over the fact that I've been made heir of the world. What, 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 is, what is that about? What is heir of the world? And then so I went back to, to Abraham uh, in, in the book of Romans. First, it also brings up Abraham. And the Bible makes an interesting statement because we love to say that the gospel started in the book of Matthew. And we love to say that, you know, if you get real deep, nah, the gospel started at the cross. And the, the gospel started with the blood. And the gospel started with the resurrection. And the gospel started with the empty tomb. But the problem with that is that the book of Romans said that God preached the gospel to Abraham yeah. wait a minute wait a minute okay okay so he's an heir you've been made heir of the world 
And then I went back to Genesis. Uh, this is me. This is how I study, y'all. This is how I study. I went, back to, I went back to Genesis, and I said, now let me find where he preached the gospel. Let me, let me, let me find where this gospel message is, because I don't see nothing about the cross in Genesis. I don't see nothing about the blood in Genesis. I don't even see nothing about being born again in Genesis. Don't get scared. I promise it's going to get good. I don't see nothing about this in the book of Genesis. And yet, the Bible says that God preached the gospel to Genesis, to Abraham. So then when you go back to the book of Genesis, you find Abraham, God calls Abraham out of Babylon. He, he gives him a calling. He gives him a promise. He says, hey, I want you to come away from your family. I want you to come away from your kindred. I want you to come away from your land. And I want you to follow me. And God is saying that he's preaching the gospel to Abraham. I want you to forget. I'm going to give it to you again. I want you to forget about your family. I want you to forget about your tribe. I want you to forget about your land. I want you to leave and I want you to follow me. And if you follow me, I will bless you. <laughs> and when I put this blessing on you, everybody that blesses you is also going to be blessed. And when, even when I put this blessing on you, everybody that curses you is also going to be cursed. Now, Abraham, you ain't going to have to curse them. Just, just let them do all the talking because whatever they say about you is going to happen to them. And, and I said, I still don't see the gospel. I, I still don't see where he preached the gospel to, to Abraham. And so Abraham goes and, and then he says, Abraham, I'm going to make you the father of many nations so that through you, all the nations of the world could be blessed. All the nations. Let me, let me translate that for you. What he said was, Abraham, I'm going, I'm going to make you a father of the Gentiles. And all the Gentiles through you are going to be blessed. <laughs> See, the Jews missed that. Because God didn't say all of Israel. He didn't say all your sons. He didn't say all your family members. He said all nations. I'm going to bless all nations through you. I'm making you a father because of what I'm trying to get to the nations. See, some of you think your destiny and your purpose is about you. It's, it's, it's not. It's not. It's not. It's not. As a matter of fact, your dest you're not even going to see the generation your destiny is for. <laughs> I know that hurts your ego because you want somebody to celebrate you now, right? But, 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 but the problem with that is your purpose and your destiny is for a nation you will never see. Martin Luther King's destiny was for a people he never met. Rosa Parks' destiny was for people she never met. Her destiny wasn't about a bus ride. Her, 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 des the, man, her destiny wasn't about what was happening in that moment. It was about a generation she would never see. And so God gives destiny to Abraham. And he says, Abraham, I'm giving you destiny and I'm giving you promise. I'm going to make you a father of many nations. So that all the nations of the world can be blessed. Now what I love about Paul. I'm going to put a bow on it at the end. I promise y'all. <laughs> what I love about Paul. Is that he is so meticulous. And he listens. And, and he was a very well good student of the Old Testament scriptures. And every word and every dot meant something to him. And I, uh, if, it, if it was plural, he emphasized the fact that the word was plural. And if it was a singular, meaning he emphasized the fact that it was singular. And so Paul highlights for us later on with the gospel that was preached to Abraham. Paul says, we miss that God says that I'm going to bless Abraham and his seed. Not his seeds. Paul says that there's a significance about the fact that God used the word seed singular and not plural, which means that we've got to start paying attention when God starts talking to us. Pay attention to every word he says because you get excited over your interpretation and not excited over the word. 
You know, much like we do the scriptures, we get excited over our interpretation and not exactly what he said. You know, the, 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 the two are not synonymous. And so uh, God, God says, Abraham, I'm going to bless you and I'm going to bless your seed. Now, the, the, the way Israel missed this is because they thought it was talking just about Abraham and his seed. So they looked at Abraham. They looked at Isaac. They looked at Jacob. They, they, they looked at the nation of Israel and said, hey, this is this is who God was prophesying to. And this is who God has promised. But Paul came along and said, no, it wasn't God really wasn't prophesying about Isaac. He really wasn't prophesying about Jacob. He really wasn't prophesying about Israel. He was prophesying to the seed, the same seed that he prophesied to Eve, that there was a seed that was going to come out of you and that was going to crush the head of the serpent. He was prophesying to a seed. And so this seed comes, which is Jesus. And so now everything, Paul opens it up for us, that everything God promised Abraham, he was really talking to Jesus. So when God told Abraham, I'm going to bless you, what he was really doing was putting the blessing on himself. When, when God said, I, I'm going to multiply you, what he was really doing was saying, I'm about to multiply myself. What, what he was doing when he told Abraham, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make you full of abundance and prosperity, what he was really saying was, I'm about to become more abundant than I am. I'm about to expand. And the beauty of this is this. God said, I'm not just prophesying to Abraham, I'm prophesying to Christ and what I'm going to to do how I'm going to initiate people into this mystery is then when you decide that you don't want to live life no more when you decide that your life is not going to work out the way you thought it was playing when you decide that you need to give up and surrender to Christ I'm going to take you and I'm going to put you in Christ in, in Christ, in, in Christ now you missed it I'm going to go that through you again it was Christ that God said I'm going to bless it was Christ, God said, I'm going to make prosperous. It was Christ, God said, I'm going to make abundant. It was Christ, God said, I'm going to give you everything in the planet. And then God turned around and put you in Christ. He, he, he turned around and, and put you. So, so when Paul starts teaching his followers and his disciples that, that the, every, you are a new creature in Christ. It's just not just some religious terminology. What he's trying to say is, I want you to remember every promise. Every time I prophesied to Abraham. Every time I prophesied to Moses. Every time I prophesied to Noah. Every time I prophesied to Gideon. Every time I prophesied to David. And I put it on Christ. And then I put you in Christ. It's it's really for you. <laughs> oh. uh, so that means I'm just, if I can look at the life of Abraham and see how blessed he was, then I'm realizing that's for me. I can look at the life of David and realize how favored he was and how anointed he was and realize that's for me. I can, I can, I can look at, I can look at how God used a woman like Rahab that, that wasn't born in the right family and didn't have all the right stuff, but, but because she, she just decided to be available for God and God spared her life and, and then God not only spared her life, he put her in the genealogy of Jesus. That's for me. That's, that's, that's for me. That's, that's, that's for me. That's, that's for me. And so, which is why when I read the word of God, I've got to know and understand that everything in the word of God, it wasn't written to me, but it was written for me because I'm in Christ. Y'all, y'all, I'm, I'm, I'm halfway through this. I promise y'all. But if you would grab a hold of what I just walked through. You can be healed, you can be delivered, you can be prosperous, your emotions can be regulated, peace can permeate in your home, your marriage will get better. I, I just gave you the, the key to a victorious life. That the key is, you ain't got to work for it. <laughs> the, the key is... I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to get this blessing. I know I'm going to mess up. I'm not going to get this blessing by fasting for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, sir. I'm not going to get this blessing by doing a 24-hour shut-in. Because what am I trying to get from God that's not already in Christ? 
So somebody tell me, so what, what are you in search of that's not already in Christ? The problem is you don't know the family secret. <laughs> the problem is you don't know that because you were born into the right family, you now have access to everything that is in Christ. So when we're in worship and they're saying, lift your hands because he's such a faithful God, I'm going to lift my hand and bless him because I know if he's faithful, faithfulness can be in me. I'm going to lift my hands and, 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 and I'm going to bless him because I know that he's a loving and a kind God and I bless him for being that because he is. But if he's that, then so can I be. I can, I can be that. Uh, the, the, the Apostle John, the beloved, the, the, the beloved disciple that laid his head on Jesus' chest at the, at the table when, when Judas was getting ready to do his thing, you know. And, and that, that disciple said, I want y'all to understand that as he is, so are we. In, in this, this world, world. Yeah. Not, not in heaven, heaven. Not, not in heaven, not after you die, not when you walk in the streets of gold, in this life as he is, not as he was, not as he was, because who was he? He was a savior. I can't be that. <laughs> he was a redeemer. I can't be that. Who is Jesus. Oh, my God. Who is Jesus? I know we want the three steps to a turnaround and the seven principles of a miracle. But what we really need to learn is, who is Jesus? Who is, who is, who is Jesus? Who is, who is, who is this man? Who, because the whole time that Jesus is walking the planet, they're trying to figure out, who are you? Who? Who, who are you? And, 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 and you know, humans are, we're so funny. We're just a funny little creature. We, 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 because cause we read the Bible and we look at the Gospels and we're like, they looked at them Pharisees. They ain't even recognize that the man they was waiting on was right in front of them. I mean, if I was there, I would have been following Jesus. No you, no, you wouldn't. No, you wouldn't. No, you wouldn't. How do y'all know that? Because you won't follow him now. <laughs> You don't follow him now, and you don't even get stoned for following him. You don't even get persecuted for following him, and you don't, you don't follow him now. You, you want to dress how you want to dress, live how you want to live, go where you want to go, do what you want to do. But you mad at the Pharisees? <laughs> Ooh, but they were searching, searching for, who is he? Who is he? Who? Who is he? Who, who is this man? Who is, who is Jesus? Because, because I know we spent years in church trying to figure out how do I get prosperous? How do I get prosperous? Father, teach me how to get more money. I'm tired of struggling. I'm tired of not knowing how to pay my bills. I'm tired of living from paycheck to paycheck. And it seems like sometimes we get it and then sometimes we don't. And it's sometimes I'm blessed and sometimes I'm not. And it's sometimes money comes and sometimes it, it's a hit or miss because maybe we've been looking for the wrong thing. And it's God, I'm coming to the altar because I really need to be healed. I really, I really need to be healed, God. This, this thing is getting worse in my body. The doctors keep telling me that the sickness is now spreading. And then I'm getting up in pain. I'm going to bed in pain. I'm, I'm walking in pain. I'm trying to figure out how to be healed. And it seems like some days are good. And then some days I can barely move. And then some days I think I got the victory. And then some days I don't know if I'm going to make it through the day. It's, 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 it's up and down. It's up and down. Maybe... I'm searching for the wrong thing. I'm in search of my purpose. I want to know why I'm here. I want to know what you want from me, God. What, 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 is, what is my purpose? What is my destiny? I'm in search for, can somebody prophesy it to me? Can somebody disciple me into it? Can somebody spiritual father me into it? Can somebody mentor me into it? And, and sometimes I get a glimpse of it and I feel like I know what it is. And then sometimes I get a curveball and I don't know what is going on or what I'm supposed to be doing. Maybe you're searching for the wrong thing. And so what hell has done, now I'm going to prophesy now, but what hell has done, what hell has done to the body of Christ in the church is hell has been building a fake church in the middle of the church. 
Hell has been building a church that can't stand against the gates of hell. Because the fake church is all about blessings and the fake church is all about purpose and destiny and the fake church is about if you how to be healed and how to be delivered and how to be prosperous but the fake church doesn't know anything about Jesus and so what's what's happening is that we've been coming to church and we've been shouting but it ain't been church and so people have been leaving the church and getting fed up with the church because you ain't really fed up with the church. You're, you're, you're really fed up with the fake church. You're, 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 you're really dissatisfied with, with what you've seen because it ain't been Jesus. It, it ain't, it ain't, I, 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 I've never met anybody that encountered Jesus and, and got dissatisfied. I never met anybody that met Jesus and, and said, I don't like it here. I never met anybody that met Jesus and said, I don't, I, this is too much for me. But the problem is we ain't been in church. We ain't we ain't been in church. We we've been we've been in a temple and we got all the right furniture and we got all the right instruments and we got all the right sound and we got all the right growls and we got all the right moans and we know how to travail and we know how to lay on the carpet. But where is Jesus? Where is Jesus? Because, because when Jesus cast out devil, the devil didn't come back. Where, where is Jesus? Because when Jesus healed people, they didn't have to go back to the doctor and say, it's back in my body. When, when Jesus delivered people from insanity, they didn't have to go home and still take medication. When Jesus... When, when, when Jesus did it. When Je- and so I appreciate your medication. Stay on it. Because if, if you ain't encountered Jesus, we need you on your medicine. <laughs> Listen. Yeah, yeah. We need you on it. Don't take them glasses off and stomp on them. Cause ain't nobody driving you home because you you encountered a fake Jesus. Mm-mm. No, don't don't throw them crutches away. Ain't nobody got time to be coming and picking you up and and, and, and placing you down. I, 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 I got a life too. Keep them crutches. Keep them crutches. How serious? Keep them. Some of you are crazy. You know you're crazy. You know you're crazy. You know you're crazy. And you're going to have the audacity to come in here and you took your medicine all week. What you expect us to do? <laughs> Please inform us. What do you want me to do with your crazy self? When the, when the problem is, we've been picking churches based on if we like the worship team. <laughs> we've, been, we've been picking churches based on if we like the preacher. Oh man, we've been picking churches because this preacher over here ain't got no scandal. I'm going to go over here and, and, and support this. We, I'm going a, I'm to a go, I'm going a, I'm to a, I'm a go over here and join this church because I can just go in and get, feel real good and, and I can be at brunch by 12 if I go over here. That, that's how, oh, I'm going to go to this church because this is the one closest to my house. I'm going to, that's, that's how we pick church. But the problem is, we've been in fake church. We've been in fake church. And so we mad at people for, for coming in our churches and saying, oh, they're just full of emotionalism. And they just running and shouting. And, then and the problem is, some of them been telling the truth. Some of you been running every week and you still in the same spot. Something not adding up. Oh, y'all got quiet. Now. Nah. I am the preacher that will walk this, 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 these aisles. Some, some of y'all come and get hands laid on you every week. And then when you walk out the door, you go and grab that same devil by the hand and say, let's go home. And then want to wear your leaders out because you want to party with the devil. No, I'm not casting that devil out of you. 
when you going to brunch with it at the church? No, I'm not praying for no financial blessing and you just spent your rent at the casino. Oh, I know what's in the room. Oh, I know what's in the room. And so then we come back to church like, why this ain't working? I keep coming to church, but I ain't getting my blessing. I keep coming to church, but I'm not getting my breakthrough. I keep coming to church and, and I go there and, and I feel good and they knock me out and they lay hands on me and I feel amazing. And then I go back home and my mind's still jacked up. And I, I go back home and my bank account's still empty. I go back home and the doctors still say this thing is not changing. So, so, so what is really going on in the house of God? What is really going on in the house of God? Mm. See, I, something's just turned. I, what, what's, what's really going on in the house of God? What's, what's, what's really going on? And so, uh, and so it, it's, it's Jesus is, is doing a walk. I'm telling you, I, I'm still prophesying, by the way. Je, Jesus, is taking, Jesus is taking a walk through his church today. He's taking a walk through the churches in America today. He's taking, he's taking a walk through and he's assessing what's, what's going on in the house of God. I know you got conferences, but who's getting set free? And I, I know you got programs for kids, but who's getting delivered? And I, I, know, I know you got a daycare center going on, but, but whose really mind has really been changed since they came to your church? Uh -huh, I know y'all got a good benevolence program, but who's been changed i know i, I know you I, I know i know you need i know you need help with your everyday life and i support it the bible says take care of the widows the orphans the less fortunate but that 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 was a byproduct of the uh, of people being changed and transformed what's going on in the house of god what's 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 going on that 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 now we gotta wait on the preacher to lay hands because you ain't got power what's 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 going on in the church what's what's going on in the church that we gotta wait all the way to sunday for you to get a breakthrough because you didn't know how to get one on monday what's what's going on in the church and what's going on that you've been listening to sermons all year and you still don't know how to break through what's What's going on in the church? What's going on in the house of God? What's going on in the house of God that somebody can sit next to you full of depression and you don't feel a thing? What's going on in the house of God and somebody is on the verge of a mental breakdown and you don't know a thing and you've been in church for seven years? What's going on in the house of God that we got to go, Paul, the writer of Hebrews said, what, what's going on that we got to go back to elementary teachings? I love elementary teachings. That's my disclaimer. I love foundations. <laughs> I love it. Because in my mind, every problem in your life can go back to a foundational issue. Every, every, everything. I don't, care, I don't care how deep you want to be. You go deep enough, you're going to come back to the foundation. So I love it. The problem is, some of y'all should be teaching it. I love foundations. It can change your life. Transform your soul. The problem is, we started teaching you foundations 10 years ago. You were getting foundations in your grandmama's church. I know you bashed it now because you left, but it, it, it actually kept you saved when you were younger. I know now you're in a prophetic apostolic house, all the, all the mother churches beneath you, but, but the problem is it did teach you how to be saved. <laughs> And now you just so gifted and so anointed. I don't know how we got here. Now you just so gifted and so anointed, but you don't know how to live right. You can prophesy my address, but you don't know how to keep your clothes on. You, you, can, you, you can tell me what's going to happen in my life next week, but, 
but you can't put the bottle down. You, you, you can, you can, oh, it's getting quiet. Now, now the problem is, I'm not here to condemn you. I'm going to bless you in a minute. I'm here to set you free. I'm here to set you free. What, what have we settled for in church? Because the power of God left. What have we settled for in church? You telling me I'm coming to church every week to hear a praise team? You can get $10 a month and get Apple Music and get a praise team. I'm coming to church every week to hear a preacher. You can get on YouTube for free and get a We can run around together. We can go to sit flats and do that. So why are we in church if not for the family secret? Why am I waking up early? Because I don't like to wake up early. Why am I waking up early every week? To come be around people that some weeks they nice, some weeks they don't want to talk, some, some weeks they anointed, some weeks they don't even know if they want to serve God. What, 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 why? are we here it's because we have yet to answer the question who is Jesus who is Jesus Pilate Pilate had Jesus standing in front of him before he went and got crucified and 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 and, and Pilate said I don't I don't know what the deal is I don't know why they want to kill you I don't know why they want to persecute I don't know why they want to crucify you and Jesus starts ministering to him about the truth. And Pilate turns around and says, what is truth? For years and years and years, I thought, God, you missed a beautiful opportunity to put that answer in your Bible. I know I wasn't on the committee for it, but if you had called me, I would have told you, you, you missing a verse right, right here. Put it, put it right here. What, what is true? Because Pilate asked Jesus, what is truth? And the scene changes. You know, that happens a lot. There, there's another story in the book of Acts. Y'all sit down. I'm almost done. I got 11 minutes. There's another story in the book of Acts where, 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 where Stephen uh, supposedly gets saved. Because, you know, we think everybody's saved because they came to the altar. I like it. I know that's we. I know that's, I know that's how we think you get saved. Is you just come to an altar. And you say a chant at the altar. And you, and you, and you say. But salvation didn't come from just repeating after Peter. Peter didn't lead them in, in, in a prayer and say, repeat after me. Peter told them, repent. Mm. That's how we got a fake church. Because we got people saying prayers, but ain't nobody repenting. We got people coming to the altar, but ain't nobody changed their mind. No, nobody's preaching a gospel high enough that makes you say, wait a minute, let me rethink that. I, I, I'm not thinking right about that. I, I, didn't, I didn't see that right. If you go to church and then walk away and say, I didn't see that right, you ain't been to church. You've been in fake church. Stephen comes and, you know, he says, you know, I've, I've given my life to Christ. You, I'm with the crowd. I don't want to. No, his world changes. Everybody happy. <laughs> and what they did was then uh, they said, okay, we're going to bring the apostles to town. We're going to let the apostles inspect what's going on in, in here. I know the evangelists love y'all. Get, get, grab, gather them up. F throw that net out there and fish. Bring them all in. And then when the apostles walked in, they took what the evangelists brought in and said, okay, now let's inspect who really got converted. And so they came into the city and said, oh, okay, we, we got to see who got, who really got converted. And, and they started laying hands on people and they started getting filled with the Holy Ghost. And Stephen says, oh, I want that. I want, I want that. I want that laying on a hand saying that people falling out and receiving. I, I want that. You know, like some of y'all. You don't want to be saved for real, but I do want a gift every now and then. 
<laughs> I don't really want to be a Christian, but I do want to be able to tell people the future a little bit. I don't, I don't, I don't want to live a dead life, but I do want to be able to, you know, do a few miracles every now and then. Can, can, and so I'm going to find somebody that can help train me in my gift, but not train me in my character. I'm going to find somebody that can teach me how to prophesy, but can't teach me how to stop lying. I'm going I'm to find somebody that can teach me how to perform miracles, but can't teach me how to keep my hands to myself. I'm, that was Stephen. And the Bible says, Peter walks up on this man and says, bruh. You need to pray that perhaps God will forgive you. Scene changes. If I was on the committee of the Bible again, I would say, Holy Ghost, you know, you're powerful. And I love you. you everything Jesus said you would be. But there's a verse you forgot to put right here. Is it Stephen ever get forgiveness? Do you want to live a life and at the end of your life it's just like a scene change? You've been at, you, you, you're coming to church, you're on the prayer team, you're on the prophetic teams, you're, you're on the greeters, you're serving, you're vacuuming, you're cleaning. And, and then at the end of your life, it's a scene change. So, it, it's happened in the body of Christ before, you know, when we came out of the pandemic. People that were leaders and, and serving. And I'm not just talking about this house. I'm talking about the body of Christ. People that were leaders and serving and, and active and performing miracles and prophesying and holding conferences and prayer crusades. And all of a sudden, we don't know where they are. Do you know more about serving than you do Jesus? Do you know more about your purpose? Then you do Jesus. Do you know more about being a powerful black woman in business than you do Jesus? Do you know? I love you. Do you know more about the civil rights movement than you know Jesus? Do you know more and have more prophetic insight about the next president than you know Jesus? Because let me help you, it, it ain't, it's not prophecy to tell you who the next president is. <laughs> Y'all don't like that. Maybe a little prognostication, but it ain't prophecy. Because prophecy, uh, prophecy ain't even originally for you. Prophecy is for God. Oh, you missed that. How do I know prophecy ain't for you? Because God will prophesy to mountains. God will prophesy to a rock. God will prophesy to a building. It ain't for you. Prophecy is how God gets his intentions in the earth. So if all people are doing are giving you information and not giving you God's intention, it ain't prophecy. That's how we in a fake church. Because we got a whole lot of information. We don't know what God's intentions are. Oh, you can tell me who the next president is. Why? Oh, you can tell me my, my baby sister's name? Why? Oh, you can tell me that I haven't been giving, getting sleep the last month? Why? And because we've been missing the why, we've been thinking we in church. And so what happens is we just start following whoever is the latest and the greatest. Whoever is the latest and the greatest. Whoever is this, whoever seems the most spectacular in the moment, that's where I'm going. That's where I'm following because we in fake church. But do you know 
Jesus. Do you know this, 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 this? I'm, I'm going to show you something about Jesus, and I promise I'm done, y'all. Let's go to the book of Revelation. Go to the book of Revelation. Y'all get anything? I made y'all mad? Okay, good, 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 good. Okay. Some of y'all saved. I love that. Let's go to the book of Revelation. Let's go to Revelation 19. Revelation 19. Look at verse 11. It says, Then I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse. The one sitting on it is called Faithful. <laughs> I love Jesus. The one sitting on it is called True. And in righteousness, he judges and makes war. This is Jesus. His eyes are like a flame of fire. And on his head are many diadems. And he has a name written that no one knows but himself. He is clothed in a robe dipped in blood. And the name by which he is called is the word of God. <laughs> and the armies of heaven arrayed in fine linen, white and pure, were following him on white horses. From his mouth comes a sharp sword with which to strike down the nations. And he will rule them with a rod of iron. He will tread the winepress of the fury of the wrath of God, the Almighty. And on his robe and on his thigh, he has a name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Who is Jesus? Who is Jesus? And why did he come to the planet? Because if he came to the planet just to give us blood, the bulls and goats did that. If he came to the planet just to perform some miracles, Elijah and, 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 and Elisha and, and Isaiah, they did that. Why did this man come to the planet? Why did this man come to the planet? Who, who is he? And why did he come for you? Last scripture, go to the book of Acts. Why did he come? Chapter 3, verse 25. God, I love your word. It says, you are the sons of the prophets. And of the covenant that God made with your father, saying to Abraham. I know y'all thought I forgot about him. The gospel that was preached to Abraham. And in your offspring shall all the families of the earth be blessed. I'm about to preach the gospel in one verse. Verse 26. God, having raised up his servant, sent him to you to bless you. God sent Jesus to the planet to bless you, not to beat you up, not to condemn you, not to talk about how, how long your skirt needs to be, not to talk about no makeup, not to talk about making sure you got on a suit and tie. He came to bless you. Now, that thing about blessing is why the gospel is in your Bible from Genesis chapter 1 until Revelation. Because that word blessing means to speak well of. It means to speak well of. Where do we see the power of God speaking well of? We see the gospel in Genesis. 
The Bible says in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And the earth was without form and it was void and darkness was upon the deep. And the spirit of God hovered over the deep. And God stepped out in the middle of darkness and said, let there be light. And there was light. And then the Bible says God looked at it and said, this is good. What does it mean to be blessed? Is that God steps out in the darkness of your life. He steps out. When it looks like there's no form and there's no and there's a void and and nothing seeming to make sense and nothing's coming together and, and nothing's adding up and, and and all confusion and God speaks a blessing over you. That's why you can't fail because God's talking about you. And God has never said anything out of his mouth and then turn around and see it and call it good. So how do I know that I'm blessed? How do I know that I'm healed? How do I know I'm delivered? Because God blessed me. I'm living my life with the blessing of the Lord. To be blessed, I know this is going to seem simple, but to be blessed is the gospel. Jesus didn't get on the cross just to wash your sins away. He had to deal with your sin so that you could be blessed. Jesus didn't go, Jesus didn't come to the planet just to get in a grave and go to hell and get people out of hell. And he did that because he was trying to get people blessed. Because remember, when Adam and Eve fell, what came to the planet was a curse. So when Adam came, he left a curse in the earth. When Jesus came, he leaves a blessing in the earth. So to say I'm blessed means everything that the curse tried to do to my mind, everything the curse tried to do to my bloodline, everything the curse tried to do to my body, everything the curse tried to do to my destiny, everything the curse has been trying to do to my finances, I'm blessed. I don't need hands laid on me. I'm blessed. I don't need to fast. I'm blessed. So, 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 so why do I come to church and why do I pray and why do I fast? I, I'm doing this to remind myself that I'm blessed. Because sometimes life will get crazy and chaotic and it'll make me start doubting God. And so sometimes I do need to shut myself up away and, and lay on my face to remind myself I'm blessed. Sometimes I, 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 need, I need to come to church because I'm, I'm, I'm fighting hell and I'm conquering demons and I'm breaking curses all week. So when I come to church, I came to be reminded of the family secret that we're blessed. We're, 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 we're blessed. I'm, I'm, I'm blessed. I'm blessed. I'm blessed. I'm blessed in the city and I'm blessed in the field and my, my basket is blessed. My bank account is blessed. My body is blessed. My mind is blessed. My heart is blessed. My limbs are blessed. I'm blessed. My children are blessed. You say, well, my children are acting up. Nah, they blessed. You say, well, my money is acting up. No, it's blessed. My spouse is acting up. No, they're blessed. I am blessed. I'm blessed, I'm blessed, I'm blessed, I'm blessed, I'm blessed. Why are you saved? Because I needed to be blessed. Why? Why did you lay your life down? Because I needed to be blessed. Why? Why did you give that up? Because I needed to be blessed. I, I, I'm not suffering for suffering's sake. I'm suffering because I want the blessing. I want the blessing on my life. Stay to your feet. I want the blessing. I want the blessing. The family secret is... We're already blessed. The family secret is I have everything I need. Oh, y'all don't believe that. The family secret is you have everything you need. And the only thing you have to do is believe. Only thing. I'm going to show you a natural example of that. Because y'all do it every day. Y'all believe it every day. And when you stop believing this, you will die. 
what I'm about to show you. Physically, can anybody in here, can you see oxygen right now? Raise your hand. Can you see it? Can you see it? All right, now raise your hand if you believe that it's here. Oh, all y'all believe in something you can't see. You so believe in it, even though you can't see it, that right now you're inhaling and exhaling. If you stopped believing there was oxygen in here, you would get out of the room. You would stop breathing. Faith is just that simple. You say, it's hard for me to believe because I feel this way. It's hard for me to believe because I'm looking at this and I'm looking at that and I'm feeling this. It's it's hard for me to believe. But faith is simple, y'all. And this is what makes it simple. You can feel one way and believe another. It's really... How many of y'all played a, 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 a virtual reality game? You've been in virtual reality. Virtual reality. You in a virtual reality game, you going to feel some stuff. You in a virtual reality game and you in a fighting virtual reality, it's going to feel like you fighting. It's going to feel like you on the beach. It's going to feel like whatever simulation is going on in the game. But the truth is, it's not real. The truth is, you can feel something and believe something else. Feel it. I know you're hurting. I know you're hurting. I know you're hurting. And I know you feel the hurt. I see it in the room. I know you're hurting. And the problem is, you've been missing out on your breakthrough because you haven't been trying to get breakthrough. You've been trying to get rid of the feeling. You've been trying to get rid of the feeling of discouragement. You've been trying to get rid of the feeling of hurt. The feeling of hopelessness. The feeling of defeat. When you don't need to be focusing on the feeling. Because if there's a million dollars in my bank account, I could wake up tomorrow and feel broke. That money's still in there. I can wake up tomorrow and feel just worn out because I've been struggling all my life and that money is still there. And if I wake up in the morning and say, I'm not going to go to the bank until I feel like I got the money in the bank. What's going to happen is my bill's not going to get paid. I'm not going to have what I need. I'm not going to be able to help anybody. And the problem is not that I don't have it. The problem is, I'm trying to get rid of a feeling. Everybody in this room that is a part of the family of God, you are housing right now everything you need. Everything you need. Everything you need. And the only thing you have to do is just start living like it. Just start living like it. What, 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 what would you do if you really were healed? What would you do if you really were delivered? How would your life be different if you really were prosperous? How would your life be different if you really did walk in favor that was unexplainable? I, I, I know, I know, I know we, we ran on a word and ran on somebody to call us out and say, you, you, this is about to happen for you in the next seven days. But I'm telling you, it can happen for you right now. But faith about James, Paul preached this. He said, it's, it's all by faith, all by faith. James comes along and says, faith needs a body. Faith needs an action. The quickest way to activate your faith. Because, you know, you already have faith. I know some of y'all think y'all don't have it. But the Bible says he's given to every man a measure of faith. Lay your hands on your own chest right now. 
Not only do you have everything you need for victory, you also have the faith right now to get it. See, the enemy has been tormenting some of y'all in the room because he's been making you believe you, you don't have the faith. The problem is I, don't, I, don't, I need more faith. The problem is God ain't did it for me yet because I, I must not be believing him enough. No, no, no. You got the faith. And you got the power. You got the faith and you got the power. The Bible says that Paul was preaching the gospel. Preaching the gospel to people. And there was a, a lame man sitting in front of Paul. And the Bible says that Paul looked at the man and perceived that he had faith to be healed. So the man had the faith. Paul had the power. And yet the man was still lame. You have been living every day of your life with all the faith and the power like a lame man. You've just been waiting on God to send a miracle, send a breakthrough, send this, open the windows of heaven, do it, God, break it through, God. Oh, God, I need it. Oh, God, I need it. And the whole time, the faith is there and the power was there. The only thing that lame man needed to do was get up. Get up. Get up. Lay your hands on yourself and say, I command you to get up. All this week, I want you to remind you, I'm getting up. I'm getting up. No, I'm not waiting on a miracle. I'm not waiting on a breakthrough. I'm not waiting. I'm tired of waiting. I'm getting up. No, I'm not going to live in this confusion and lack of clarity and I don't know what's going on. Uh -uh, I'm getting up. I'm getting up. I'm getting up. Because I'm blessed. It's the family secret, y'all. It really is the family secret. And if you are in this room right now and you're not a part of the family, I would run to this altar. Because your whole life could change. Your whole life could change. Because it doesn't matter what you've done. There's no sin that the blood can't wash. None. 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 There is nothing you have done or will ever do that the blood can't take care of. I love Jesus and I love the power of the blood and somebody say well yeah the blood it'll wash your sin away but what if I mess up next week or and what if I what if I slip up this afternoon or what? what I love about the blood is it covers future sins how do I know that because Jesus didn't die in 1989 when I was born Jesus did not die when I came to the planet the blood was already shed and if it washed my sins, it meant that the blood had to go to the future. Yeah. If the blood didn't go to the future, you couldn't be saved. There is nothing you can do or ever do that the blood cannot wash you. God's not mad at you. He's not mad at you. He wants to bless you. Yeah, he wants to bless you. I see condemnation breaking off of people. I said he wants to bless you. He wants to bless you. I need somebody to take up take 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 60 seconds and worship God for the blessing. For the blessing. I'm blessed. I'm blessed. You said no, 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 I, it ain't the blessing I need. I, I need I, I need something. No, it's the blessing. It's the blessing. It's the blessing of the Lord. It's the blessing of the Lord. Come on, bless him. It's the blessing of the Lord. It's the blessing of the Lord. It's the blessing of the Lord. Of the Lord. You thought you had ran out of time. 
and you thought you had made a misstep and had missed an opportunity. And the Lord said, you've been trying to get things right and been trying to make amends and been trying to put things in order. He says, you don't have to do that. Stop trying to fix it. Stop trying to go back. Stop trying to go back. He's not trying to take you back. He's trying to pull you forward. He's trying to pull you forward. And hell had even tried to break your heart. I mean, crush you. But the Lord says the reason why that heartbreak didn't destroy you is because I orchestrated it. Because I needed to get rid of that heart to give you a new one. And you're about to find that over the next 60 days, your dream life is returning. Uh Uh-huh. Your dream life is returning. And the answers you've been seeking from God, he said, I want you to keep that journal by your bed and go back to writing again. Go back to writing again. Go back to writing again because I'm not finished. I'm not finished. And I'm going to show you that the opportunities you thought you missed are small in comparison to what I'm about to escort you into. And you're going to find that when you had given up hope and because you had been struggling and fighting even for your family and it seemed like the warfare was getting too great. It was so great that it started wearing on your body. That's the only reason you start giving up is because your body started crumbling under. But the Lord says, I'm about to show you that I am the God that blesses. (laughs) I will keep my word to you. save that boy too that's what the Lord said we are blessed we are blessed we are blessed uh, there's somebody here by the name of Melody 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 I'm trying to discern which one it is Uh, uh, that's you can you wave at me Melanie Melanie Melody Melanie or Melody Melanie or Melody who is that? Who is that? Melanie. Right? Can you can you come here to me? Mm-hmm. You've got to stop running. You got to stop running. There are things that you have on the altar before the Lord that you want him to open up and do for you. And it seems like he dangles these things before you. It seems like what you've been praying for, the breakthrough, you can smell it and then it vanishes. And it's like you get, you get in the same room. It's like, oh man, this is it, y'all. You call your friends, you're excited about it. This is it. This is the moment. And then it's like it just dissipates. But the Lord says what he's been doing is showing you that what he has for you is greater than what you desire and that if you will submit to this call of prophetic intercession you're going to find that he's not only going to open the doors for you he's even going to change the heart of that woman that actually slandered you and, and took an opportunity from you that there's there's a, there's a woman and you actually initially thought she was for your good and she was going to help you almost mentor you like and then it switched and a heart turned on you but the Lord says I'm going to redeem it and I'm going to show you that vengeance is mine because I'm going to show your daughter I'm going to bless you and you're not going to have to live life in the struggle and fight because you know what it is to fight because you've had to fight for yourself and you love to fight for people that it looks like they can't fight for themselves you're always taking up for people and trying to defend and trying to fight battles but the Lord says I'm about to show you that I know how to be a fighter and he's about to fight for you in ways that are unimaginable and you're going to find that you're going to walk into a season where the favor of God is going to be unexplainable for you and it's not going to be like times of old because you had even told God I don't even know if I want another prophecy 
I just want what everything, everything you've been saying already, I just want it to come to pass. I just, I just want to walk in it. I want to live in it. I'm, I'm tired. But the Lord says you're going to find a new strength and a new might come upon you. And you're going to, whoa, you're about to leap over walls and barriers and doors that have been slammed in your face. God says you've been waiting for them to open, but you're getting ready to walk through closed doors. You've been waiting for people to invite you to the table and you're getting ready to walk into rooms that you yourself own. Father, I release this entrepreneurial grace. And I break every word curse. Every word curse that she put on herself regarding her potential, regarding what her life will look like. I break you. And I thank you that the cores of that thing is broken off of her mind, off of her emotions, and even off of her body. And I thank you, Father. Whoa, yeah. There's a there's a uh, there's a sickness that runs in the women of your family that you've been having a fear about it uh, uh, attacking your body and taking you out. But the Lord came to announce to you that the devil is a liar. The devil is a liar. It's it's not. It's, it will not. It will not. It will not. It will not come nigh you because the blessing of the Lord is on you in Jesus name blessing 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 the family secret y'all I'm blessed I'm blessed I'm blessed grab put a grab a seat if this word bless you put a seed in your hand we're gonna sow and get out of here This is the gospel, y'all. This is the gospel. That you are blessed. You don't have to work for it. You don't have to struggle for it. You're just already blessed. Glasses on, bandana on your head. Stand up, can you stand up for me? <laughs> I ain't gonna mess with you too bad. Tick top, tick top, tick top, tick top, tick top, tick top, tick top. What the Lord is about to do is change your calendar. Uh, yeah, he know you didn't want it, but he, I promise you, he says he has, this one is going to be for your betterment because what hell had been doing in your life is making you feel unstable and making you feel like you couldn't get your footing and, and, and grounded and, and like everything was always changing and moving. But the Lord says this next transition and change that's about to happen in your life is coming to stabilize you. And you're going to find that your circle and your surroundings are getting ready to change because you have not had the support and the resources you needed. Yeah. You've been the resource. And you've been the one pouring. And you've been the one supporting. And you've been the one giving. But, but you haven't been the one receiving. So the Lord says, I know you're tired of the transitions and the unsettling, but... I'm changing the time for you. And you're about to find God turn back the clock. Because there were things that you missed because you decided to pass on it to support somebody else's vision. And to support somebody else's vision. And support somebody else's business. And support and support. And you've just been missing doors and missing opportunities and missing it. And you've been telling yourself, you know, when it's my time, it's my time. I'll get it. I'm fine. And, and, and it's happened so much that you've even started telling yourself, you know, I'm fine with just supporting. I'm fine with just being and being the cheerleader. But the Lord says, I'm turning the time back and you're going to find that opportunities that you thought you had missed, they're coming back around. 
And this time they're coming back around with more grace and more favor. And you're actually more wiser than you was the last time they came around. And you're going to find that where you thought you had missed it, you've actually been groomed for it. And then when you step into it, you're going to find, what is this? You're going to find that God is really going to answer the prayer of your heart regarding little girls. Yeah. Yeah. You thought God was going to give it to somebody else. And then you were going to back them up. But he's getting ready to start this this mentorship and development and safe place for little girls and you're not going to struggle for the resources you're not going to struggle for that building and you're not going to have to worry about your own life being provided for while you're trying to uh, get this business off the ground and, and do it as you know the struggle the word of the lord to you is that the struggle is over The struggle is over. And the reason it's over is the Lord says, I'm, I'm doing this because like my daughter Hannah, you have been crying out and asking me for this and it seemed as though the heavens were closed and the windows were closed. But the Lord said, recently you decided to give that thing to him. And because you prayed and gave it to him, he's about to give it back to you. Father, I thank you for the blessing yeah for the blessing for the blessing for the blessing for the blessing of the lord that adds no sorrow coming upon my sister's life somebody give god praise my god all right seizing your hand 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 seizing your hand, seizing your hand. We get out of here, I promise y'all. I'm not going to keep y'all like, like my daddy. Uh, grab my hand for me. Miracles. Miracles. Miracles have always fascinated you and healings and demonstration has been a fascination of yours because the Lord says, I know you think you've been called to do one thing, but I actually called you to be a dunamite. And you're going to find that there's a power at war. Uh, yeah, there's even a thing you've even been shocked at times that you will walk in the rooms and all of a sudden people just start looking and watching and, and, and the enemy had tried to use it to make you insecure. And the enemy had tried to make you uh, use it and make you start second guess yourself and thinking people didn't like you and then had something against you and working against you. But the Lord says it's really a favor and a power on your life. And there's an authority that he's getting ready to release to you. And you're going to find that you're going to be used by God to do miracles. And not just miracles in the body, but miracles in creation. You're going to find that there's going to be similar miracles like Jesus sent Peter to get money out of the fish's mouth to pay his taxes. There are people that are going to come to you and you're going to be able to move in miracles and provide resources and finances by the power of God. And you're going to, whoa. And there are miracles regarding mental health that the Lord is going to do. That's what, no, you, no, 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 no. The devil tried to think you were about to lose your mind and that you were going crazy. Uh, 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 uh. It was an anointing for mental health. An anointing for miracles in the mind. Miracles in the mind. Miracles in the mind. And hell had been trying to turn your gift against you and make it torment you and make it suffocate you almost almost like you couldn't breathe sometimes at night but the lord says this gift is not gonna suffocate you it's gonna be your deliverer deborah it's gonna be your deliverer it's gonna be your deliverer father i charge her with the anointing of miracles somebody bless god somebody bless god somebody bless god Bless God. You're blessed. You're blessed. You're blessed. You're blessed. My God.
happening in the room right now with people's confidence this last season really robbed a lot of you of confidence confidence in yourself confidence in the word of the Lord confidence in, in what God has spoken to you there there's a miracle happening where God is supernaturally restoring confidence 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 because that's what some of you have been lacking is confidence. That's it. That's it. That's it. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Just making sure the Lord's finished. Y'all all right with that? Thank you, Jesus. The presence of God is here. It's an unusual presence of God. Just take a deep breath for me. The Lord just wants to bless some people. Just bless you. Take that struggle out of your journey. Just bless. Just bless. That's all. He just wants to bless. He's a blessing, God. Just a blessing, God. Sometimes when the blessing's on you out of, out of, out of nowhere... Out of nowhere, God will just surprise you. Out of nowhere, God will just surprise you because the blessing's on you. Because the blessing's on you. The blessing's on you. The blessing's on you. All of those seasons of tears and crying and crying and crying. The Lord said, you haven't even begun to see what I'm about to do with those tears. You haven't even begun to see what I've done, what I've, how I've bottled them up and, and sold them into your future. Uh-huh, the enemy, whoa, the enemy made you think that <laughs> you were behind schedule. No, 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 no. You got more time than you think. You got more time than you think. Because hell had wanted you to be a woman of sorrow where you, where you smiled on the outside but sorrow gripped the heart. And where you fought on the outside but hopelessness gripped the heart. But the Lord says, I'm going to show you and I'm going to prove to you that I don't lie. It's been a long journey. <laughs> it's been some dark nights. Dark nights. There, there are not even many people that know the the nights you would you would cry yourself to sleep. Not many people know the fasting you would do and crying out to God and and you just kept helping people and serving and 
sacrificing and with that smile. But the Lord says, I know you thought it was a struggle. It was really an offer. And I'm about to show you that no man gives me an offering and I owe them a debt. But the Lord says that your tears and your sacrifice has come up before me and I'm getting ready to pay you back. And don't feel like you need to apologize for this season that you're walking into. And don't feel like you need to make people around you comfortable with the favor and the blessing of the Lord that's on your life. The Lord says it's going to make people uncomfortable because the anointing that I placed on your life is to disrupt systems. That organizational thing that's on you is not just on you as a skill. The Lord says it's, it's, it's connected to what I called you to do. I've called you to confront and disrupt systems. That's why certain people don't like you. Uh -huh. Hell had tried to weaponize your anointing against you and, and, and make it a spirit of rejection. But the Lord says it's not rejection. It's actually a call. And you're going to find that there's a new strength and a new might that comes upon you in this season. And you're going to find yourself with new confidence to move forward. Oh, you wanted God to change his mind. He said, I'm not. Yeah. You offered God a plan B. Sounded good, actually. Had a little mixture in it from, from, from plan A, but the Lord says, I didn't change my mind. I didn't change my mind. Father, I thank you. Anoint your daughter with fresh oil. Yeah, fresh oil. That's what she needs, fresh oil. Fresh oil. Hallelujah. 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 I promise I'm done. Grab my hand, please, sir. Uh, it's your heart that has attracted the Lord, not your failures. There are mistakes and things you've made that you thought you needed to get it right, fix it, get it in order, and it's really been holding heavy on your heart. Because you feel like you let some people down and you really hurt some people and you knew you could have did better. But the Lord says, I don't remember any of it. But your heart is about to open up a season of favor for you. The Lord says, your heart to him is, is, is like his son David. Your heart makes him smile. And the problem is you've been extremely hard on yourself. There, there are a lot of people around you that don't even know how hard you are on yourself. You get irritated when people criticize you and, 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 and start critiquing things you do because it's not that you're pushing back on what they're saying. You're already hard on yourself. And so you just go into fight mode, trying to fight it, trying to defend. And they think you're not listening and they think you're stubborn. But what you really is, you're fighting the voice of condemnation. But today the Lord has come to set you free. Father, by the authority of the Lord Jesus Christ, I break the spirit of condemnation, guilt, shame, failure off of this man of God. And I thank you, Father, that you are crowning him with wisdom. Yeah, crowning him with insight, crowning him with understanding. And it's not too late. Yeah, it's not too late to start that business. It's not too late. And I, yeah, and these word curses that said that you, as a child in school, people were saying that you weren't smart enough. They talked about you're not been, and, and you've been trying to prove all your life how smart you are. 
all your fights have been trying to defend and show people you know just as much as they know. But you're going to find that the Lord is going to be your confidence and your, whoa, and your shield. You don't have to defend yourself anymore. And you're going to find that as you let those guards down, there is a new favor and respect that is getting ready to come your way that you've been fighting for all your life. And you're going to find that this time is coming and you don't even have to defend. You don't even have to say anything. It's going to come with ease. The Lord said, let that be a sign to you that I deserve to be followed. Let that be a sign to you that I deserve to be obeyed. I deserve to be obeyed. And in, he hasn't been ignoring your prayers. I know it seems like you go to him and you're always asking for the same thing, same thing. Sometimes you stop praying because you're tired of praying about the same thing. And then you go in and say, well, you know, God, here I am again. Just now you know this is what I need. And it seems like nothing's happening. That day is over. But the favor of the Lord is. Eh, and the blessing of the Lord that adds no sorrow. In Jesus' name. That makes sense to you. Hallelujah. Okay, I'm out of here for real, y'all. Praise him.